If you want to learn how to make manga digitally but don't know where to start, then you've come to the right place. In this video, we'll cover everything you need to know to create your very own manga using Clip Studio Paint Pro. From learning the program to laying out your first page and exporting your finished work. So, are you ready? Let's get started. First, let's get to know our software. Clip Studio Paint is the go to software for a lot of pro mangakas. Popular titles like One Punch Man, Chainsaw Man, and Dr. Stone were all made using this program. It's also the same software our very own pro mangaka mentors use. Why is it so popular? It's because Clip Studio Paint has all the tools you need to create manga right from your computer. Take it from our mentor, Nao Yazawa. She told us, Using Clip Studio Paint is efficient, convenient, and practical. It's a big advantage. So my latest manga, a one-shot paperback, was created fully digital. Just as an FYI, Clip Studio Paint actually has two main versions. Clip Studio Paint Pro and Clip Studio Paint X. Clip Studio Paint Pro is the standard paid version. If you're a beginner mangaka, this is all you'll need. Clip Studio Paint X is the premium version with more advanced features. It's double the price and a bit of an overkill if you're not a pro yet. Today, let's take a closer look at Clip Studio Paint Pro and see how we can use it to create our very own manga. When you first open Clip Studio Paint, all the different windows and buttons can feel overwhelming. But don't worry, you don't need to know all of them. At least, not right now. We'll focus only on the basic tools you need to make manga. Let's start with the left side of the program, our toolbar. This holds all of our tools, like the pen, lasso, and eraser tools. Next to the toolbar is the subtool panel. This displays all the different subtools that come with the currently active tool. For example, if we choose the pen tool, the different types of pens available in Clip Studio will show up in this panel. Like the G pen, mapping pen, and calligraphy pen. These different kinds of pens mimic real life pens. For example, the real life G pen nib has a flexible tip and it allows you to create thin and thick lines very easily. The mapping pen, also known as the maru or round pen, creates very thin lines and it's great for details. If you transition from traditional to digital manga, then you'll probably recognize these settings and it'll be easier for you to create the same kinds of lines and effects. If you've been struggling to create your own manga for years, and you're finally ready to produce your first published manga and bring your stories to life, then we invite you to apply to our online one-shot manga drawing program. You learn directly from pro-Japanese mangakas and published manga artists through weekly live Zoom sessions. We're going to create a custom training plan to make sure you're on the right path to publish your manga, join manga contests, and pitch to publishers. Plus, you'll be with an amazing community of fellow aspiring mangakas who are on this journey together with you. Ready to make your manga dreams a reality? You can book a free manga consultation call with us to see if we're a good fit to work together. The link is in the description. Below the sub tool panel, you'll find the tool property panel. This is where you can make adjustments to your currently selected subtool. Let's say you want to make your pen bigger or smaller. You can make those adjustments to the brush size in the tool property panel. In the center of your software, you'll see the canvas or drawing space. Don't worry, if you don't have a canvas open yet, we'll guide you through setting one up in the next part of this video. Next to our drawing space, you'll find the resources. Clip Studio Paint comes with a variety of assets available in these panels. Beside our resources, you'll find the Navigator. It includes a mini view that gives you an overall view of your canvas. You'll find tools to zoom in and out of your canvas or rotate and flip it. Remember, 
These functions only change your view of the canvas and not the canvas itself. Below the navigator, you'll find the layers panel. Layers are like transparent sheets of paper stacked on top of each other. On each individual layer or sheet, you can draw or edit images without it affecting the other layers. This can be really useful when you want to make changes to specific parts of your drawing without accidentally affecting the rest of your work. To create a new layer, all you have to do is click the new raster layer button. You can also rearrange layers to be on top or below each other. Here, the layer with the red circle is placed on top of the blue layer. You can see it reflected on the drawing space. And when you switch that up, you notice that the blue is on top of the red now. The order of your layers matter a lot. Generally, you want background elements like screen tones or background art at the bottom, your character artwork in the middle, and elements that overlay your art like speech bubbles at the top. Now that we have the fundamentals of Clip Studio Paint covered, it's time to start working on our first page. To get started, let's set up our canvas. For that, we'll go to File and select New. In the New dialog, you'll find a lot of different project types. Since we want to make manga, we need to select Show All Comic Settings. There isn't a standard canvas format for manga. The format can actually vary between publishers like Shoesha or Kodansha. Some prefer B4 size, while others might prefer A4. Luckily, Clip Studio Paint includes different presets for magazines like Weekly Shonen Jump. If you plan on publishing your manga or joining a manga contest, it's always best to check with your publisher or online publishing site's file size and format requirements first. For practice, you can just use Shueisha's preset. Using this preset gives you a canvas with all the proper margins for publication in most magazines. It also sets the canvas resolution for you, so it's ready for both web and print publishing. Once you've finished setting up your canvas, click OK and a blank white canvas should appear on your drawing space. Let's take a look at the colored rectangles surrounding your page. They're called margins. The outer margin is called the page size. The inner margin is called the safety margin. Next is the trim border. Then we have the bleed border. Pay attention to the safety margin. Important elements like dialogue, characters' faces, and panel borders should be kept inside this area so they don't get cut too close to the edge when printing. Your artworks should stay within the trim border. This is the edge where your page will be cropped for printing. You can use the bleed border to go beyond the trim border and create a full bleed page. This means your artwork will be printed to extend to the very edge of the page, and it would look something like this. However, if full bleed printing isn't the goal, it's safer to just keep your art within the trim border. Every mangaka has their own workflow when it comes to drawing their manga. But the first step should always be thumbnailing. Thumbnails are quick, rough sketches used to map out the composition of your page and the layout of its panels. This is the best time to experiment and figure out what works best for your manga. Remember, keep your thumbnails quick and simple. We'll polish them in the next step. And that's the undersketch. The aim of the undersketch is to create a final draft for your page based on your thumbnails. Our pro mangaka mentor, Nao Yazawa, begins by creating a single layer to roughly sketch her characters and background elements. Then, she creates another layer on top to further refine her sketches and add finer details. Have you noticed that Yazawa sensei sketches with a light blue color? She prefers a light color so she can easily tell her sketches and line art apart during the inking phase. You can also use this same technique for your sketches. With our final draft ready, we can move on to paneling. Going back to our toolbar, select the Frame Border tool. 
you'll notice there are three different options for creating panels in the subtool panel. The rectangle frame lets you create rectangular frames by dragging the tool on the canvas. If you want more customization, use the polyline frame or the frame border pen to create your own custom panels. Another way to create panels is with the divide frame folder tool. You can find it under the cut frame border tab in your subtool panel. First, create a large rectangular frame using the rectangle frame tool. Select the divide frame folder tool and use it to cut the frame into different shapes by clicking and dragging. Press the enter key to make the cuts. You can adjust the space between your panels by changing the gap in the tool property panel. If you've finished setting up your panel and you realize you need to make some adjustments, don't worry. Just use the object tool in the toolbar. It'll let you move the panels around and even change their shape and size. Now it's time for inking. Clip Studio Paint has a lot of different pens you could choose from, like the G pen, which mimics the look of dip pens used in analog manga. Whatever you use is up to your preference. Start by creating a new layer on top of the undersketch. That way, any erasures or changes to your line art won't mess up the sketch. To get smooth line art, be confident in your strokes. Avoid doing chicken scratches unless that's the style you're going for. If you're using a graphics tablet, don't forget to take advantage of the pressure sensitivity feature. Harder pressure equals thicker lines, lighter pressure equals thinner lines. Varying line thickness helps add a lot of depth and visual interest to your work. If you're having trouble with wobbly lines, you can find the stabilization setting in the tool property panel. This setting helps even out your lines as you draw. The higher the stabilization value is, the smoother your lines will be. Try to play around with the value until you find something that works for you. After inking, it's time to add those final touches that'll really bring your page to life. I'm talking about motion lines, screen tones, and speech bubbles. You can say goodbye to drawing effect lines by hand. Clip Studio's figure tool lets you create lines like these with a click of a button. You can find it in your toolbar. In the figure tools subtool panel, you can find tabs for speed lines and focus lines. Each subtool creates different types of motion lines, so check them out. We'll demonstrate how to use the scatter focus line. Start by using any selection tool to select the area or panel you want the motion lines to appear in. To create focus lines, all you have to do is click an area of your canvas, then draw outward from the crosshair in the center. The size of your circle affects the spread of the focus lines. The bigger the circle, the more spread out the lines are, and vice versa. If you're not happy with this, you can always adjust your focus lines using the object tool. Clip Studio Paint also has pre-made assets under the effect line tab in the resources panel. Simply click the asset you need and drag it onto your canvas. To apply screen tones, we'll use the selection tool again. The rectangle selection is great for big areas, but for tricky shapes like character hair or accessories, it's better to use the auto select or polyline selection tools. Start by selecting a specific area where you want to add the screen tone. Once you've done this, a small menu should appear below it. Click the new tone button and the simple tone settings menu should pop up. The simple tone settings give you control over the tone's look. You can set the pattern type, dot frequency, which affects the size of the pattern and density, your tone's lightness or darkness. The pattern type changes the shape of the pattern. You can play around with the settings to get different styles of tones. You'll see a preview as you adjust them. When you're happy, click OK and the tone will be created in the area you selected. If you ever need to tweak your tone settings, just click the layer where the tone is and adjust it in the layer property panel. 
we're nearly finished with our manga page. All that's left to do now is add the dialogue with speech bubbles. We'll be using the text tool and balloon tool, both of which can be found in your toolbox. Start by adding your dialogue with the text tool. You can change the font, its size and style in the tool property panel. Click the balloon tool and select the ellipse balloon subtool. Then click and drag the tool across the text to create a speech balloon. To add the tail, all we need to do is click and drag with the balloon tail subtool to create it. You can also use the pre-made bubbles under the balloon tab of the resource panel. Don't forget to proofread your dialogue as you create your speech bubbles. Double check for any typos and compare your manga to the script or storyboard to ensure everything lines up. We've finally finished our manga page. Before we move on, take a moment to review your work and check for any last minute adjustments. If everything looks good, it's time to export your page. First, head to the menu at the top of the screen. Click File and then Export Single Layer. Then select JPEG. A file explorer window for saving your file will open. It's best to use a descriptive name like a combination of your manga name and the page number. After you save, a JPEG export settings window will pop up to let you adjust your settings. Make sure text is ticked under the output image settings. Yazawa Sensei recommends setting the expression color to gray to keep your screen tones looking their best. Next, go to advanced color settings and untick the enable tone effect for layer option. If you plan on publishing your manga online, always be sure to check the platform's file requirements. You can adjust your manga's output size accordingly with the specify output size setting. Once you're done, click OK. A preview window of your manga will appear, showing you how it'll look. If everything looks good, go ahead and click OK to export. That's it. You've completed your first manga page with Clip Studio Paint. If you're ready to learn these techniques and all the different skills like drawing, writing, storyboarding, paneling, to create your first published manga, then we invite you to apply to our online one-shot manga drawing program. You'll have pro Japanese mangakas acting as your editors. We'll create a personalized training menu for you to make sure you get your first one-shot manga published. Plus, you'll be in an amazing community together with fellow aspiring mangakas. You can book a free manga consultation call with us to see if we're a good fit to work together. The link to sign up is in the description. In the meantime, you can check out this video for pro mangaka tips to avoid the most common beginner mistakes.